Dr. Mailer, coming at you with more bad news. Well, it's uh, it's Sunday. It's uh, it's eleven thirty now. Um, I've been working since uh, about eight thirty in the morning. Uh, it's this is uh, this is my work day, uh, first day of the week, and I got to get things ready for you. And uh, and I thought I would share a few thoughts um, for my business history class uh, on the the supply chain issue. Um, I don't know whether you've noticed uh, that you order things and you, and it's hard to get them. Uh, you know, the, the wood is difficult to get. Uh, uh, um, plumbing uh, equipment is hard to get. I mean, uh, you know, if you, um, uh, the cars uh, are really uh, hard to find, uh, used cars, new cars. So I wanted to say a few things about this and, you know, yeah, primarily, I mean, you know, uh, we know that the most obvious cause of supply chain problems is COVID-19. And by the way, these first remarks are coming from a, uh, a New Yorker article. Let me see if I can, where I have it here. Um, textbooks, uh, supply chain, New Yorker. Here, I'll show you the, uh, I'll, I'll share my screen for a moment so that you can see um the article here share screen share and there we go so this is the article i'm you this is uh, the new yorker um comes from here i'm just gonna a amy davidson sorkin and just you know the difference between uh plagiarism and uh, and uh, and not is you wreck you acknowledge where you got the stuff from now i'm gonna uh, kind of go over that piece from the New Yorker. And by, by the way, I just mentioned that the New Yorker is um, one of America's uh, leading magazines. It's um, um, very, very good. The people who write for it uh, are the best writers in the world. They just, that's what it is. They, they pay the most money and they get the best. You pay the most, you get the best, okay? So, um, uh, I, so let me get back to this. Um, uh, the most obvious cause of the of the supply chain problem is COVID nineteen, obviously. Uh, and to just take a look at cars. So, um, in the case of rental cars, uh, when uh, travel decreased sharply in the spring of twenty twenty, many of the companies uh, generated cash by selling off the sizable portion of their fleets. Um, they probably assumed that uh, they could come back later, and you know, and when business picked up, they'd buy new cars. You know. Um, so, uh, but uh, when they went back to buy the cars, they found that the supply uh, had been disrupted because of plant closures in Asia where chips were manufactured and the lack of uh, the, the chips, um, according to the Wall Street Journal, uh, resulted in some 7 million fewer automobiles being built. Uh, a White House briefing last week um, said that the uh, dearth of chips was dragging down the entire U.S. economy, obviously, because it's not just cars that need chips. I mean, all of our, our you know, all the machinery, all of the function in our society need to have computer chips in them. So if you have a, a problem with the supply chain on computer chips, it's going to affect everything across the board. Uh, what's often at the heart of the supply chain issue is a labor issue. So that's the next main thing that we know affects supply chain. Uh, last week, the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach and California were approaching a crisis because uh, there were over 70 container ships that were offshore. They couldn't come into the harbor and it would become like, like a maritime parking lot because there aren't enough dock workers to unload the cargo or enough truck drivers to move it off the ports. Labor shortages are the reasons that many of these things just seem to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. This is a, uh, and I, I should say that in, in, for business, that um, in the 1980s, uh, American manufacturer uh, began to copy Japanese manufacturing practice of just-in-time manufacture. That is, you don't stockpile a lot of stuff that for your cars. What you do is, uh, you figure out very precisely when exactly you're going to need the parts in order to put them together so that you don't have to pile them up. 
uh, and it makes for a more efficient production and cheaper automobile. But that requires that you have a very effective delivery system. The labor situation uh, is no doubt related to COVID-19, but there's a wide uh, disagreement about how much that's about. A, a significant number of people who were laid off early in the pandemic because of closures haven't gone back to work, even as more businesses have reopened. The, factor, the factors cited include fear of infection uh, and aversion to dealing with crazy custom, cons, customers. You know, that um, our society is becoming more toxic. I mean, you can see that every day. People are, uh, are, are less chill. I mean, it's, you know, they, people snap all the time. And, and especially for people who are working in restaurants or, or Carter or, or uh, Myers or, you know, Walmart, I mean, you get these uh, people who are just frustrated and fly off the handle. Um, you're seeing that everywhere. There's a rising toxicity in our society. So, and this is a particular concern for restaurant workers uh, who are also in short supply. Some essential workers such as healthcare aides and delivery drivers uh, who are hard hit by the pandemic uh, may be re reassessing their uh, job choices. And many uh, uh, and more of the 600,000 people and, and most of the 600,000 people who died of COVID were workers. So uh, now it's 700,000, so, you know, this is, Numbers are just moving fast. Um, so uh, even with schools reopening, there is a, a incredible shortage of affordable daycare. Uh, daycare workers, you know, paid minimum wage. Uh, you know, we go on. The the most the people who are most important to sustaining our our society are paid uh, miserably uh, poor wages. Uh, and so we have uh, problems, shortfalls everywhere in terms of, uh, of workers. Um, the question of how to solve the labor problem can be answered, uh, it can't be answered without an examination of our values and our priorities. Would it be better to persuade people to fill their uh, jobs by cutting unemployment benefits or raising the federal minimum wage, which is still at $7.25 an hour, a ridiculously small amount of money that you can't live on. In fact, you know, a, 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 a low paid worker working full time, two jobs, so you can't raise a family on that kind of money. And then you have the, the climate, which is probably uh, uh, looming over everything. Um, Hurricane Ida, for example, uh, wrecked a quarter of a million cars. Uh, I, I, had, I had a friend living in Queens, and so she's living in this place for, for 10 years. Uh, down below the apartment complex, there's a garage for, for people who have, you have an apartment, you also have a parking space. So for 10 years, she has her car in that parking space, everything is fine. And Hurricane Ida comes along, and Hurricane Ida, remember, was in the Gulf of Mexico, not in New York, but, but it resulted in such an, an incredible amount of, uh, of, of rainfall that New York completely flooded. The basement of this building flooded all the cars down there were completely destroyed. So Hurricane Ida resulted in the loss of, uh, of a quarter of a million cars. We're constantly being hit by these um, uh, catastrophic uh, climate events. Uh, the thesis of my course is that the modern corporation is the dominant institution of our time and that it is the primary cause of the collapse of our civilization and the extinction of life on this planet. That's about as close to evil as you can get. I mean, it's destructive. That's what I'm saying, that the modern corporation, modern capitalism uh, is absolutely destructive to our civilization and life on this planet. Uh, this week, we'll begin taking a serious look at that thesis uh, with our video, video on the corporation as we're gonna be watching. And what I want to emphasize is that the Corporations are legal creations. They exist to make a profit for their shareholders. There are nonprofit corporations like the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, but by uh, far and wide, the vast majority of all corporations exist to make a profit. The second thing I want to emphasize is that corporations are modern creations. Until the end of the Civil War, there were very few corporations and the restrictions were many. 
A corporation had to be created by the legislature for a specific purpose in a specific time. The modern corporation that we know of was created after the Civil War, when corporate lawyers got the Supreme Court to assert that the 14th Amendment, which was created after the Civil War to give free, freed slaves civil rights, was actually used mostly to benefit corporations. So that when the 14th Amendment said that all persons born in the United States were citizens in the United States, they said that in order to protect black people who were born in the United States. They wanted them to be recognized as citizens and treated equally. Instead, in 1896, the Supreme Court ruled that segregation was perfectly legal as long as uh, things were relatively equal. So uh, black people, uh, were segregated in every aspect of life and they couldn't vote, serve on juries, I mean, all kinds of restrictions the Supreme Court thought were just fine. And while stripping black people of their rights, the court applied the 14th Amendment to corporations saying that corporations were persons under the 14th Amendment. And so, for example, Hobby Lobby is a person, since Hobby Lobby is religious, they don't have to provide reproductive health care for their workers. But Hobby Lobby is not a person and has no religion and has no soul. The most destructive ruling that the Supreme Court made with regard to corporations was their 2010 ruling in Citizens United in which the court ruled that, all, that as persons, corporations could give as much money as they wanted to politicians since they were like you and me uh, and they had free speech. The result is that our politicians are entirely in the pocket of corporations. When I say corporations are evil, I don't mean that they are evil the way human beings can be evil. Corporations have no soul. They simply exist to make a profit and the harm they generate comes from putting profits before other values. Our supply chain problems really emerge from corporations exploiting people for their profit. Corporations have caused extreme harm over and over again. They repent, they, they never repent, they can't. Uh, if they can, if they can get away with something, they do. And if the fine is not, uh, if they're still going to make more money by by doing the crime and paying the fine, they'll do the crime and pay the fine. Take a look at Exxon Valdez, the oil spill in 1989, and then look at the Deepwater Horizon spill in 2010. Between these huge disasters, oil spills are just a regular occurrence. Here in Michigan, we have experienced many oil spills. Uh, that have polluted our waters. And we're in the midst of an argument with Enbridge over line five, and it's just ongoing. And everybody knows that sooner or later, and, you know, and Enbridge has a whole history of one oil spill after another. Recently, there's been a lot of attention paid in Michigan to PFAS. Um, and I posted a video uh, by John Oliver on the, on the history of PFAS. And once again, one of the things you see is that the companies knew that the PFAS were dangerous. They hid the fact, they, uh, they dumped the, the, the chemicals into our waterways. And here in Michigan, you know, it's extraordinary. I mean, you can go and I, I, I've been uh, hike, biking all over Michigan and you see these places where there are big signs up that say, you know, uh, the water's contaminated with PFAS, stay out. You, you know, uh, it's, uh, the contamination is everywhere. And one of the things that John Oliver points out was that when they first wanted to, to test the levels of chemicals in people's blood, they wanted to find uh, people who didn't have PFAS in their blood, and they couldn't find anywhere in the world anybody whose blood didn't have PFAS in them. Uh, they had to go back to blood samples from before the Korean, from the Korean War that, were, that the military had taken and put on deposit. So they had these old blood samples that were kept, and those blood samples had no PFAS because that was before they were invented and distributed. When it comes to catastrophes of chemical companies, a DuPont is almost as destructive to life as the fossil fuel companies. And I posted an, um, uh, a, um, a link to uh, a story about the uh, Bhopal um, uh, chemical disaster in India um, 30 years ago. Everything about the way we live is completely unsustainable. And the reason for that is this focus on making a profit. The modern corporation is uh, the, the center, is the primary cause for the collapse of our civilization and the extinction of life on this planet. That's what I mean when I say the modern corporation is evil. So I'll leave you there um, and um, we'll,
in this one. Here, here we go. That's Dr. Mailer with more bad news.